All right, we appreciate everybody being here uh, tonight. Uh, those that you that don't know me, my name is Gary DeBose. I am a uh, self-made millionaire in real estate. Uh, we own a real estate company in Hawaii called Aloha Paradise Realty. My wife is a principal broker. We have flipped houses for years. I started flipping houses when I was, um, I guess I was 21. And uh, that was my first one to do. It was in a community called Lake St. Louis, Missouri. And that's where I got my first uh, start. We do uh, assisted living. We own mobile home parks. And uh, we had tried to do different webinars on different things. And I think um, maybe changing the way you think is a huge uh, start in your future of who you want to be and what you want to do. doesn't matter if it's in real estate or whatever your business is. Um, the ideas are the same. I don't believe there's anything new under the sun. So you're going to see some stuff I stole, some stuff I wrote, some stories I tell, some stories I've read, um, and uh, all of that together. Thank you, Brandon. All of that together, and hopefully uh, it, it gives you guys some um, insight of what maybe you need to do um, for your future and, and where you want to go. And I'm just going to give you some of the things that we do and our ideas and our thought processes, and hopefully um, that works for you guys too and you learn from those processes. I've done something different tonight that I don't normally do, so no need to uh, write me and tell me how bad I spell. No need to write me and tell me how bad my grammar is. I'm sure my wife would, at this moment is panicking. Um, both of our offices are in the same room, and so uh, she usually does my spell check. I wanna show you tonight that it doesn't matter who you are or how talented you are at some things. I'm not talented at a lot of things. So a lot of you guys get your information from me or you see things on Facebook. You think, oh, those are really cool posts. Those are really cool things. In the background is uh, my assistant. She's on here. Um, and Jody is uh, exceptional. Her and Jason are getting ready to have a baby boy. And uh, they have two beautiful children and a uh, super couple been with me for years. And uh, she does a lot of the um, things that I do, you see out there, she, she does a lot of those. So a lot of times she's handling some of those things and dealing with those that I don't necessarily deal with. Um, one of those is I'm writing a book right now. <clears throat> she goes through and fixes my grammar and fixes my, um, twang, Arkansas twang or Missouri twang or now Georgia twang. Um, and, uh, changes some of the things the, the way I say, uh, where the way I, I try to come across with them, she fixes some of the spelling. And and uh, today I sent a text to one of my boys. He was in Walmart and I put we're in the car and I was typing fast and it was W-E-R-E. -E, and he made fun of me going, uh, where in the car? Where in the car? Why in the car? And uh, so I decided tonight that even though I'm speaking on a millionaire mindset, um, you need to find somebody who compliments you, who makes you better at who you are and what you are. And uh, that, that is a secret, I think, a great secret of life. And I wanted to give you some ideas. And so I'm going to give you a little bit of mindset of a millionaire and the thought processes that come through uh, of a millionaire. You've always heard this, get up early and work hard. <clears throat> and uh, there are some validity to this, but I'm going to change it a little bit. And here's why. Um, my grandfather, his whole life, got up early, worked hard. I, I don't know. Uh, my favorite picture of my grandpa, he's passed on years ago now in the 80s, but the, my favorite picture of my grandpa, uh, DeBose, on my on my dad's side, is of him uh, pushing, he's in my parents' house, and, and I, I may have it here now, is him pushing a tiller in the garden, and he's got to be 86 years old, and he's pushing that tiller and making a garden. Now, he's one man, he eats almost nothing whatsoever, and he had this huge garden, which is a great thing to have when your grandson's coming. I, at this time, I'm probably 30, 35 years old, and your grandson's coming to eat strawberries. It's a great plan for grandpa. But my grandpa got up every morning of his life around 5 o'clock. I don't know, outside of my father, a harder working man. I believe my dad was a harder working man than my grandfather. My grandfather was a, a nurse and a farmer and a cattleman. And uh, he also bare fist box bears. Don't ask me how I know that, but I wasn't there, but it was pretty impressive. Um, and uh, my grandpa was a, he was a hardworking man. My grandpa did not have uh, a lot of money when he died and left a little bit of money to my dad. I think it was, I want to say $40,000, somewhere around there. 
Um, but was the one of the greatest men I knew. Worked hard every day. Worked from the time the sun came up in the morning till the time he couldn't stand up anymore. My dad was a an abs. Uh, my grandpa was an absolute great, great, great man. One of the best men I know. The next man I know is my father. My father. I don't know any man. Now I I know some of you know preachers. My dad was a preacher. Uh, Baptist preacher, and um, not all Baptist preachers are this way, but my dad was. My dad is the hardest working man I personally know. I've never met a man that works harder than my father. Yet my father still, his whole desire, his whole life was to maybe die a millionaire. And um, uh, what my dad worked his whole life to do still didn't happen because America is on the mindset that if you get up early and you work hard, then you're going to be uh, successful. And uh, that's not necessarily all, always the truth. Um, if you raise your hands, uh, just so you know, I don't certainly don't know what that means, but Jody does probably if you take care of those, Jody. Um, and I will I will take some questions when we're done today and try to answer. Uh, there are questions everybody generally has and you'll be able to type them. So if you want to get ready now or type them in now anytime during the conversation, you can type in questions and I will try to answer some along the way. But for the most part, I just kind of going. But working smart and hard together is a is a different plan or process. And when it comes to the mind uh, uh, mindset of a millionaire, you, you think different in not just today alone. So I don't always just think about today. I'm thinking about tomorrow. I'm thinking about next month. I'm thinking about next year. And my mindset is a little different because I'm I'm working smart and hard together, not just working hard uh, and, and doing the same thing. No one's ever gotten wealthy by the hour. I say this all the time. You can't get wealthy by the hour. If you're working a job right now, you go in, you punch a clock, your chances of getting wealthy is hitting the lottery. And, uh, Tiffany, by the way, was notified today, uh, that she won the Georgia lottery, right? Correct. Yep. Tiffany, how much? $2.5 Tiffany won won a $2.5 million Georgia Powerball lottery today. I'm very proud of her. Um, except that um she she, she hasn't hasn't played. So we're not sure how she won, but we got it on the email and we're sending the stuff in right now. Um work smarter. Work where your mind is looking for. See here, here's what everybody wants to live for. They want to live for today. We have a real estate company and uh eventually we're giving our real estate company up and um it's pretty amazing the opportunities you give. And I have somebody in my family that I gave the opportunity that if you would work hard and be a part of our team, then in a few years, we would just give you this real estate company with all the rentals, many thousand dollars. Uh, I don't want to tell, but I, it's a lot of money per month uh, just on rentals uh, alone. We get uh, about 10% of the rental and uh, any given month, it can be upwards of 15 $150,000. And then, of course, there's stuff that comes out of that. But it's a huge chunk for a young man to, to make. And I said, if you want to do this, and he started out doing it, but he never finished it. And the reason he never finished it was too hard. You had to keep doing it. There was no pay today. You didn't see anything right now. Now, if he'd have waited till now, where we're at now, within the next six months to two years, he would be making a great income. He would, he would have a, a great life and taken care of and a huge future. But the problem is, that people don't keep their eye on the real prize. They keep their eye on what they can feel today. Remember what we said, we're looking down the future, what they have in their hands, what they can touch physically. Um, they're always planning on today. And if you're planning on that, then it's paycheck to paycheck. We just went through a storm here in uh, Georgia and um, it was devastating to a lot of people. And we talked to a lot of people and been around a lot of people that their whole life stopped. They don't have a paycheck. They didn't have any money. They've been out of work for three or four or five days. The storm has taught. Uh, we had a man that was at our place today talking to him. And today alone, <clears throat> it was at a standstill um, because he couldn't do the things he wanted to do this weekend because he didn't have enough money because he didn't work last week, three or four days. You, you just can't get rich. You, you, you can't get ahead. Matter of fact, you almost can't make a living anymore by the hour in America. So you've got to be looking at something on the side. And I'm not saying quit your job and do this. I'm saying look for something that you can do on the side that will make you wealthier tomorrow than you were today, whatever that is. So I like to fix cars and change them and sell them. And so for years I did that. My dad likes to do church vans. Uh, we've done that. We like to do trailers, my wife and I and 
Terry uh, at our house here, we like to do trailers, mobile homes, because there's huge profit in them over long term and they keep going giving. There, there are so many things that we like to do, but our eye is always on the real prize, which is our future, our retirement, our our uh, where we're going to be in 10 or 15 years. We want to travel. We want to see the world. So we keep our eye on that. If you will look inside your heart and say, what is your why? Your why is the best motivator. My best, my best motivator for me is my wife. And I don't know if all men are this way, but in my case, it is. My wife is my best motivator. And I don't mean she sits back there and go, you go, Gary, you're awesome. And uh, though I, now that I think about it, she's, she's never, ever said that. But anyway, um, no, I'm just kidding, baby. Um, but she's my best motivator in that I love her so much and I want things for her and supply for her and give her other things that she's one of my great wives. My children are one of my wives. I don't have a grand desire to have a, a sports car. I'm not saying I'm opposed to having a sports car. And if someone gave me a sports car, I'd probably drive it. But I'm I, I'm happy with my old truck. Um, I'm I'm not into uh, big ticket items. I see all my friends. They get a bunch of money and they buy all these big ticket items. I'm not a big ticket item kind of kind of fella. I drive a, a used four wheeler on our farm. Uh, my wife has a new one. I drive a used one. Although when she's not around, I drive hers, and she just doesn't know about it. Um, but we, I look at my why, my why is not the things I can have. My why is the children I have, the wife I have, the church I have, and you've got to decide what is your why. And if you would put your why in front of you all the time, it would be your best motivator. Years ago in 1988, I decided I wanted to move to Hawaii. I wanted to make enough money to move to Hawaii. And that was my goal. And beside my bed every night, and I think my wife still has it, don't you, babe? Mm -hmm. I have a pink piece of paper. That to move to Hawaii, I needed one hundred and ninety one thousand dollars and I had had one hundred thousand. So I put ninety one thousand beside my bed and every night before I went to sleep and every day when I woke up, I saw this figure ninety one thousand dollars. And I uh, wanted to go by a certain date and it said ninety one thousand. And I think I want to I want to say it said um, uh, 90, 1990. And um, I moved there in 1991 and. Uh, made the trek to Hawaii and I had, I had a plan, but I saw that every day the prize was always in front of me and I was looking for something. What is your why? Why is your best motivator you have? Here's the quick question. I mean, the, the statement start before others in your space and stay longer than they stay. I do not care what you do. If you want to be more successful, you want to move up in your company. You want to be the, the person in charge. You want to start your own future. You look at anybody else in your space. What I mean is if you're a contractor, if you're a drywaller, if you're a, if you're a uh, uh, guy that does yards and you, you mow yards for a living, I don't care what your space is. If you start earlier than everybody else and you stay longer than everybody else, you'll move up quicker. Every place I've ever been, every person I've ever been around that, that I see that is successful will always tell you I walked in the door before everybody else did and I stay longer than everybody else does. Now, that doesn't sound like a lot of fun. Let me just tell you. Make sure your eye is on the real prize. And here's why. I know guys that have worked their whole life to get wealthy. And when they got wealthy, they realized they don't have a family anymore and they're too old to enjoy it. You, you must have a medium ground. You must find a medium ground for what you want to do. Don't start enjoying it too soon and don't wait too late uh, to enjoy your life or do the things you want to do. But to get there, you got to have your eye on that prize of what that is. And whatever that prize is for you, I'll give you a little insight to my uh, desire. This is my desire. On all Royal Caribbean ships, there's a Gary DeBose room. That's my plan. My wife is laughing right now. I'm thinking about putting that beside my bed starting tomorrow. Right? Uh, all I want is every ship. You'll get on any Royal Caribbean ship, and they have a Gary DuBose room. And at any given time, Gary DuBose can come on the ship and go in that room and make enough money just to be able to go on Royal Caribbean anytime. Because I absolutely love to cruise. My wife and I both love to cruise. It's a lot of fun. And we want a Gary DuBose room. Um, I know that's, that's silly. But I'm saying, what is your prize? What is your why? What is your reason for succeeding? And if you will go after that reason and say, and maybe for some of you, it's just a more comfortable living. Maybe for some of you, it's just to have $10,000 more this year than you had last year. And I think that's a great achievement and something to write down and say, whatever it is, I need to look at my why every day and realize, why am I doing this? Why do I want to go extra? If you don't, 
you'll be like most everyone that works on my team, everyone that works with me in this business, everyone I'm around, every realtor I see, they give up because their eyes not on the prize. No way you're going to go into your job tomorrow that let's say it pays you 30 bucks an hour. No way you're going to go into your $30 job tomorrow and become the president of the company unless you're already the president of the company or your dad died or your wife's dad died. Or your grandpa died. And there, I tried to cover them all. I'm saying the the way you at a thirty hour dollar an hour job is is you get there before they start paying you, and you stay longer than they're paying you, or you do something else before you go in the mornings and something else in the evening to up your income. Otherwise, you're going to constantly be fighting from paycheck to paycheck to make it work. No working by the hour ever makes anybody rich. I've never heard anybody say, "Look, I was working." Trying to think of a place. Uh, I was working down at the uh, steel factory and at the steel factory, I was working so hard and I worked so long and I did so great. And all of a sudden I just found out I'm a, I'm a multimillionaire by working the steel factory. If you if you listen to that statement, it's true about most jobs. Um, your, your job sometimes is the number one thing that holds you back. And I'm not saying ditch it. I'm not saying get away from your job. I'm just saying look at what you're doing. And if you're not any further along today. If you're not further along in real estate, if you're not further along in business, if you're not, for, you need to realize my job is not fixing me. What can I do? Most people don't know, but if you want to make more money, there's certain things you got to do to make that happen. Let me give you some. I think these are good uh, ideas to live by, um, and and I, I and I hope you'll really take to heart what I'm saying, not how I say it. I come uh, come across sometimes a little rough. And a little brash, and I'm not trying to be. Uh, I'm I, I, I'm not charging you for a webinar. I'm giving you opportunity to talk to somebody who's made some money and and has got a future, looking for a future, and God has richly blessed us. And I want to help you. But if I the way I can help you is give you opportunity to talk to somebody who's been there when you're on your way. So let me give you some of these simple statements. I think that your mindset should be: Don't let the failures of others stop your success. Learn from their mistakes and do. I've, I've heard a lot of people in our business, in the flipping business. I tried to get in that flipping business. I'm telling you, I lost so much money or I've been doing that flipping business for a certain amount of time and I've lost so much money. Don't let the failures of others stop your success. See where they messed up. See where they screwed up. See where they did wrong or what went wrong with what they were doing and then do the opposite of what made them a failure. And those who had some success and some failures, look at their successes and steal their ideas and their information. The greatest thing you can do is suck the life out of somebody who has good information about what you want to do. I would do anything I could to get beside somebody who made good money, somebody had some talent, and I would try to learn every single thing I could from them. And I'm not saying not be their friend. I'm not saying not be somebody who's there for them and a good person. I'm just saying get every bit you can and take it in. This is a short life God's given us here on this earth, and you ought to be doing the best you can with it. Get out and do Yes, men several, uh, uh, seldom lead the way. If you're not careful, you'll become everybody saying, oh, that won't work. Oh, that won't work. And you go, yes, I know. Oh, okay, okay. And all of a sudden, you're following the non-successful people. Look at your life around you. And I say it all the time on my webinars. You're the sum total of five people you hang around the most. If you have five people, you look at them. And all you guys, you, you go bowling together. You all go out and uh, play basketball together at the gym. And I'm not saying y'all not be in shape a little bit. I probably need to be in a lot better shape than I'm in. And I'm not saying you don't go down and uh, and uh, go, go maybe shoot darts at, at a bar. Uh, whatever it is that you do with your friends, look at your friends. And generally, that's about as high as you get. So, yes, men, seldom lead the way. Here's another one that's important. Take bad news. It's the most important news. Sometimes people don't like to hear the negative. They don't like to hear the bad. This is what went on. I, <clears throat> I have had to tell people that what we were doing and what our plan was to make money together did not work and we were not making money. That's a hard thing to say to somebody. But you take the bad news and the good news together. It's the most important news when you can say, this is what's bad. This is how it's going. Let's hope this turns out this way. But if it doesn't, this is the bad news. If you you will get a long ways in life if you can learn to handle the bad news. Usually people get all upset about it and can't do it. We'll talk about that here in a minute. 
Don't automatically trust people who have something at stake from your decision. So if you're not careful, you'll let someone else that has, uh, let's pick a realtor in my in my business, a realtor. A realtor will say, oh, that's a great deal. Oh, this thing will be awesome. Oh, you can't believe how good this will be. If I listen to them, they are going to get paid 3% or maybe 6% of my sales price. They're probably not the best people to listen to. I don't want somebody who's not a good judge to be telling me what to do. I like to trust people who have nothing at stake. I'm here today to give you a webinar. I have nothing at stake for you. There's nothing going to, it's not going to profit me. You're not going to help me one bit today. There's not a thing you can do for me. I'm not here because I need something. I'm not here because we're going to sell something. I'm here because I want to do make a difference in America that we still have good, strong people that are willing to go out and make an honest dollar and make some good money while they do it. That's all. So I, I don't have anything to gain. Get your information from someone who doesn't get a leg up because you do something. Understand people's motivations, whether it's money, status, love, reputation, power, envy. If you're not careful, you'll get sucked into these things and sucked into the things that they want rather than what your main prize, what your main goal was. Understand people's motivation. I make a lot of money just understanding other people. What motivates them? Sometimes there's some people you can put money in front of their eyes and they will go like crazy. There's other people you can put money in front of their eyes. They don't give a flip about that. They care about status or or being cared for or loved or reputation or power. All of those positions, you've got to learn everyone in your what I call a downline, people who are behind you. Every one of those people, you need to know what motivates them and it helps them to be better. If you will do your best to make other people good you will be successful on your own. When you give other people what they want, you're you're going to be successful. Because when you give other people what they want, often they help you get what you want. The world has become so selfish. Our, and I'm not a political guy, so this is free. You don't even have to pay for this. Our presidential candidates right now are absolutely horrible. Now, I don't know where you stand and I'm not telling you where, what to vote, what to do, but I I just absolutely believe it's the the worst election. I'm 53 years old. I've never seen anything like this in my life. I I, I can't stand it, but people have become selfish. What happened? And and by the way, I, I live in a place where I have seen selfishness thrown out the window. People have given over the last week more stuff than I've ever seen in my life, helping people out, giving people food, handing people money, paying for people's gas. You can't believe how this, I would like to say community, but good night, we're we're 100 miles each way from me, of how people went together to help other people and things they gave them. Absolutely amazing to me. So make sure you understand people's motivation. Make sure you understand how they are or what they are. Know when to walk away in any deal. I do not care if it's real estate, if it's stocks, if it's if it's building houses, if it's working a job, whatever it is, know when to walk away. People always say, oh, I've been working on this deal for four weeks and I just want this thing to go through. You may want a deal, but you maybe end up with a bad deal. You should be able to look at whatever it is that you're investing in or planning to do and decide how am I going to get out of it? How am I going to walk away from this deal? Most important thing to do when you find you're in a hole, you're stuck there, you're not moving, that's going in, stop digging a hole. If the hole is there, don't keep on digging. It's just going to get deeper and you're going to find yourself worse and worse. I was just talking to one of my investors this past week and said, or maybe it was last week and said, look, I don't know if it's going to get any better. We got to take whatever we can get. And I didn't work out, but we were going to take less than what we had in the property. Um, and you and I don't want to do that because I've, I've never had to do that. And I'm like, we, we may have to take less than what we have to just to s- take up our losses Because you can't have a hole and keep digging a hole and have it keep going on. You've got to stop it. I want to give you 17 things rich people do that poor people don't. So here's 17 things that rich people do that poor people don't. And I thought this was really good. I've I've, I've stole it. I've used this thing. I don't know how many times, but I think it's great. Wealthy believe I create my life. Poor people believe life happens to me. Like the the shirt from, uh, um, what was the the movie? Uh, Oh, the guy was filmed in, in, in Savannah on a bench. Forrest Gump. Forrest Gump. Thank you, babe. Wealthy people believe I create my life. I choose what I'm going to do tomorrow. I choose where I'm going to be. I choose how I'm going to be. 
And poor people believe, well, it just happens to me. It just seems, have you ever heard this? Oh, things just started happening. It's just gotten so bad lately. You just can't even believe it. I don't believe things just happen. I believe things happen and then you fix them because you're changing or fixing or choosing what your life is. Uh, wealthy people play the money game to win. Poor people play the money game to lose. Let me explain that. As soon as somebody gets a raise, and I'm talking about my children, I'm talking about many people I know. As soon as someone gets a raise, guess what they do? They go buy something or get a payment or do something that makes them pay exactly what they got their raise. Then the truth is they didn't get a raise. They just got another debt. Wealthy people play the money game to win, to get ahead, to, to be different. Wealthy people are committed to being rich. If if you are poor right now and you say, and I don't mean uh, necessarily you don't have any money whatsoever. I mean paycheck poor and you live in pay, pay, paycheck to paycheck. You must decide I am going to commit myself to being rich. I'm going to commit myself to whatever I've got to do. I'll start reading the right books. I'll start listening to the right people. Whatever it is I've got to do, I'm going to do that. Wealthy people think big. Poor people think small. Now, I want to give you an example of that. And uh, some of you have heard this example before, but I'm going to give it again anyway. So sit back. It's probably like number seven or something. Um, when you look at deals, when you look at things, there is a percentage that you must pay to make that deal happen. So let's pick buying a house. You go to buy a house. The, the banker guy tells you, hey, I'll loan you the money, but you got to put 20 percent down or you got to put 10 percent down, whatever that is. On a million dollar deal, you've got to be able to put 10 percent down. If you can go to somebody who's got 100000 and say, look, I'm going to buy a million dollar deal that's going to make us 100000 a year. I'm going to give you that 100000 the first year or maybe half of the second year. But in the first year and a half, I'm going to pay you your 150000 or your 100000 back. Plus, I'm going to pay you 10%. That's great for him. Now, the, the, the deal that you're buying itself has to be able to pay him his $100,000 back. When it does pay him his $100,000 back and you give him 10%, he's going to think you're the greatest guy ever because you were able to give him that money and make him the kind of money he's never seen before. That is always my goal with people who work with me is to make them more money, my investors, more money than they've seen before, that all they have to do is go out and get a paycheck. They walk right out to the mailbox when it comes in and get a paycheck, and that's always my goal for my investors. But we think, I think big. So I get them to put up, and let's say they, okay, I'll put up $100,000. Over the next year and a half, I give them their $100,000 back plus $10,000 profit. Now I own a business outright that's making me $100,000 a year. Now, how do I do that? Well, if I tell them I'm going to give them percent, the 10%, if I had to pay it myself, I could do that from McDonald's. See, Gary, how in the world can that be possible? If you go to McDonald's and you make $833.33 a month, you could pay back the $10,000 that you borrowed the $100,000 to do the million dollar deal. So I don't look at a million dollar deal as a huge problem. I look at it as $833.33 a month because wealthy people think big and poor people think small. All you've got to do is get around somebody who teaches you to train and change the way you think and the things that you think. Wealthy people focus on opportunities. Poor people focus on obstacles. We often spend a lot of time just looking at houses, my wife and I, or we look at deals or we look at things to invest in. We've invested in things that lose. Everybody has. If you're an, an, an investor and you say, oh, all, all I've ever done is win on everything I've ever done to get to where you are. At some point, you had to lose. There are losses. There are times that you're going to lose money. Suck it up. And look for what is the next opportunity that I see that can make me more money and make up that loss and do it again. You see, poor people look at things and go, oh, my goodness, we did, we tried to flip a house. and We lost ten thousand dollars. And I know to some of you, ten thousand dollars is an absolute huge loss to us. It's a huge loss. We don't ever like to lose money. But a ten thousand dollar loss is not the end of the world. It is time for you to figure out how can I fix this next month? How can I fix this six months from now? How can I fix this one year from now? And I'm looking down the road to what the prize is and where I'm headed and where my life is headed. And I'm focusing on the opportunities that come before me, not looking at what I lost. This is, this is a huge important thing for you guys to think about. When you lose money, forget about it. If you don't, it will eat you alive. When you lose money, 
forget about it. Some things lose money. Some things make money. When you lose money, forget about it. Move on and fix the future. Don't dwell simply in the past. Wealthy people admire other rich and successful people. So when we see somebody who has more money or has more stuff, we want to know how they do it, what they do, what, how they, they pay attention, what things they invest in, how do they get here. Poor people often uh, look at people and resent the rich and resent successful people. Your friends that see you doing something different, you're here today because you want to change something. That's why you're here. And your friends that don't want to change something don't understand why you would be on a webinar like this to try to change who you are. You cannot focus on what they say or think. You've got to focus on what, remember what I said, don't focus on unsuccessful people. Focus on successful people. Learn what is it that will make me wealthier than I am today. Now, some of you that have a great family, a great wife, a great home, go to a good church, you got a happy life. That's probably as successful as it ought to get. I, I'm, I'm thankful for all those things in my life. I've got a woman that loves me and I love her immensely. We have a great life together. We get to spend every day together. We work together in the same office. We go to the store together. We go shopping together. We spend more time. And I know some people are thinking, oh, my goodness, I'd have to get away. My hobby is not golf and my hobby is Tiffany. And and she is my everything. And I love being with her. Now, at some point, she's going to get tired of me and then she's going to want to go do something else. But for right now, we're all good. Everybody said the honeymoon would last only about a year, and we've been way over that, at least by at least one year, maybe five, maybe ten. And uh, the honeymoon's still there. We we love to spend time together. I I with her want to look at everybody we see who's successful and figure out how did they get here, what made that happen. Not well, why do they get that? Or how come he gets those cars? Or I hated that they have that. And if you're not careful. You'll spend all your time on the negative and you'll miss the thing that will get you that car or get you that place or get you that thing. <clears throat> Wealthy people associate with a positive, successful people. If, if you're not careful, you will hang around people who will make you an ugly person. Have you ever seen that person and everybody knows it? Everybody's been around it. Have you ever seen that person out there that... um they, they just have that sourpuss look on their face like they've been sucking on a dill pickle for a while. And you look at them and go, they must really be. I saw some lady on TV today and I told my wife, that lady's miserable. Just from the looks of the wrinkles on her face, the way she frowned, every minute of her life had to be that way. Or, her, or she wouldn't have the wrinkles going that way. She would have positive, happy, peaceful wrinkles. Instead, she had negative wrinkles. If you're not, not sure, you'll hang around the people who got the... Uh, Everything is is doom and gloom. When I was a kid, my parents used to read me a, a story about the sky is falling. This guy, I think it was a chicken. I'm not even sure anymore. But he was underneath the tree and a nut fell on him. He goes, the sky is falling. The sky is falling. You always look at the things to the negative. Try to find positive people to be around. I will not associate with negative people. I just don't want to. I don't want to spend time with you. If you think the negative, and listen, if I've had hard times just like everybody else. We've had some of the hardest months we've had here in the past few months just like everybody else. Everybody's getting hit with different things. Nobody knows what's going to happen with the election and how it's going to uh, uh, turn out, what kind of taxes brackets we're going to be in, what kind of things we have coming up. You don't have any clue where we're at right now, but I've got to keep myself positive, and I don't want to be around people who are just constantly negative all the time. Wealthy people are willing to promote themselves and their value. Poor people think negatively about selling and promotion. You have a value. Uh, we're reading a, a, a really good book with our children right now. And it's talking about the laws of indifference, the laws of, uh, of the place, all the things about the, the person themselves. The law of indifference is you're, you're, you're different than everybody. The law of difference. You're different than everybody else. Yes, you may have a bigger nose. Yes, you may have a bigger belly. Yes, you may have a small uh, head and maybe you have a, a huge ears and maybe your eyes are too big for your head. Maybe you're. Uh, you know, you, you got all the things you can say. I'm too fat. I'm too skinny. I'm too tall. I'm too short. You have a value no one else has. You have an ability that no one else on this earth has. You can reach people, talk to people and do things that no one else can do. So when you get up in the morning and you look in the mirror, realize you're different than everybody else. It's a law of difference. It's absolutely a, a powerful thought of just the law of difference of, of, of who you are. And then the the, the integral parts of yourself. Um, I play the trumpet. Not very good. I play the piano by ear. Not very good. Uh, I play the guitar if it's left-handed only. 
I can't play a right-handed guitar, but I can play a left-handed guitar. I, I sing a few songs with a guitar because I only play two or three. Um, I play the harmonica. Uh, I don't have a lot of talents. I play the radio best. I am so super good at playing the radio. You can't believe it, and especially if it's like serious. I'm, I'm exceptional at it. Uh, I play the radio. I don't have a lot of those kind of talents like that, but everybody has some talent that you have that other people don't have. Everybody has some story to tell that someone else doesn't have the, to tell. Learn the, the importance of your value. I say this in my, in my webinars and my seminars a lot of times when I'm teaching. If you say you have no value, you have no value. Your value equals what you believe you are uh, 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 have the ability to do and can do. Choose what your value is. Choose who you're going to be and what you're, you, you want to be and then make that happen. Wealthy people are bigger than their problems. Poor people are smaller than their problems. Now, everybody has problems. I don't care who it is. And uh, somebody came to us and wanted, I think it was one of our, our kids, and wanted to talk to us about their debt problem. And we said, okay, we'll sit down with you and we'll try to help you out and work it out. And the funny thing is their debt problem, it might have been one of our adopted kids, I can't remember. Uh, but they want to talk about their debt problem. And I want to say if I'm wrong, their debt problem was $1,800. Wasn't that right? It was, it was like $1,800. And we thought to ourselves, let's try a check for that. We're done. There, problem solved. But the truth is, I've never given my kids anything. I make them all work for their own money. They all have to strive on their own. I don't buy them cars. I, I don't buy them houses. I don't do anything for my children that any other uh, person would do if it wasn't their children. I want my kids to learn to stand on their own. Someday they may inherit a lot of money, and I want them to say they made it before the, before I made them. And so I'm very picky about that. Um, but I want them to look at their own problems. But to them, that was uh, who, whichever child it was. I can't remember. This has been probably five, seven years ago. And they bought a house since then. Oh, okay. Now I do know who it is. My wife said they bought a house since then. Now they have their own house. The house has got about forty, fifty thousand dollars in equity. How awesome is that now that I didn't help them and just give them eighteen hundred dollars? They changed their life around. They changed and fixed their credit. They watched their credit score all the time. Got their credit up and bought bought a house. I'm I'm proud of them. But when they came to me, that $1,800 was a huge problem to them. And I said, it's not a problem. Let's start paying it off at $10 a month. They said, well, how will that ever pay it off? I said, well, how much did you pay on it last month? Nothing. Well, that's never going to pay it off. What I'm saying is you look at your problems. You say, I'm bigger than that problem. I'm going to start doing that. First thing you do is cut up the credit cards or whatever it is. You cut that up. You stop that. And then you stop the things that you don't need to do. Everybody listen to me right now. If you don't have any money and you've got a gym membership for $100 a month, you're crazy. Absolutely crazy. You go outside my house right now. Come on over. I'll chop up some lumber for you. I'll cut a couple of holes in there. You reach your hand in there. You get a hold of that lumber and you start pressing that every day. You're going to build muscles. Matter of fact, bring a chopping axe. I'll show you how to strengthen your back muscles, your lower leg muscles. I got all kinds of help for you. And you don't got to pay me a penny. I'll let you do it for free. See, the difference is we look at the problems that we have and we got to overcome the problems, not look at the problem. It gets so big that it's mountains. I read a book years ago when I was uh, in college. And it was uh, people make mountains out of molehills. And another book was good things happen to bad, uh, bad things happen to good people. And I, I, I really think that you need to look at your life and say, what are my problems? And how can I get from A to B? I'm not selling anything. I wish I could help you more. I'm just giving you the ideas to think of a mindset uh, to where you have somewhere you're headed that you can change uh, your future and, and make that happen uh, for the future. Wealthy people are excellent receivers. Poor people are poor receivers. Oh, I don't want that. Oh, I can't do that. Listen, when someone does something for you, let them do it. When something is good for you, let them be good for you. Learn to receive when somebody does something for you. Now, you should also learn to give. So wealthy people also, also should be excellent givers. But I'm just saying too many times we don't allow people who want to do something for us to get to know us better or become friends do that. And often we become very selfish uh, when, when you have a little bit of money and you should be excellent receivers. Don't be afraid to work with somebody and let them do something. Wealthy people choose to get paid based on results. Poor people choose to get paid based on time. This is probably one of the greatest ones that I've used for years is getting paid on, on, on your results are huge. Getting paid on your time is never, ever, ever going to take you anywhere. If you go to work tomorrow and everyone that's on this webinar now, you listen and you work a job and you make $40 an hour, that's great. But that's probably going to be the top of your game until you retire. Maybe you go up 45, maybe you go up to 55, but that's it. 
That's the top of your game. Some of you are here making $8 and $10 an hour, and you're barely making it. And you say, if I just do this, I'm going to get a raise to this. If you're basing your future on time, you're going to be right where you were from paycheck to paycheck. You must be getting based, paid based on results. If you do good, find a job where if you do good, you get paid for good. Find you a place where if you do right and you work hard, you get paid for working hard. And change whatever it is in your life you have to do to do that. Wealthy, wealthy people think both. Poor people think either or. Now, let me say that again. Wealthy people think both. Poor people think either and or. And I'm not saying this. None of this has been the way, by the way, to say someone's poor and they're different than me. I don't care how much money you have. It's never mattered to me how much money someone has. Um, some of my best friends are poor. There's times when I've been poor. Sometimes I've been dollar poor. I've got all kinds of real estate and all kinds of things, but I can't hardly go out and eat at McDonald's. If you if you think uh, I mean something even derogatory about that, I apologize, and I don't. I'm just trying to state the difference between people who have money and people who don't have money, and, and often it's what it is. Wealthy people think both. Well, what if I do this? I got A or B. I'm going to think A or B all the way out. A, it's going to make this happen, this happen, this. B, it's going to make this happen, this one. I'm going to weigh it. Some people are so fast to just make a judgment call or a thought process rather than really weighing what goes on. So if I am going to, uh, this week I am going to um, go on a cruise or buy a new car. My job, and I'm not buying a new car or going on a cruise this week, but I'm just saying. My job would be, I think I can swing both. Here's how. I'm going to do this, this, and this to get to go on a cruise. I'm going to sell this, this, and this to buy a new car. I'm going to try to figure out how to do both those things. <coughs> Poor people think either or. Either I've got to. By the way, one of my favorite comedian lines, I can't even remember the guy's name, but he's hilarious. He talks about winning the lottery and somebody was on, on the TV and Greg they'd, something. what is it? Greg something. Greg something, she thinks. And uh, he, he gets on there and he goes, I want to tell you right now that I was listening to somebody there on TV. They just won $4.6 million. And they said, we're going to either, and that's the catch word right there, either change the transmission in the Bronco or put a new roof on the house. And he's like, Hey, burn the Bronco and get a help. Somebody's already gave me the name of whoever it is. Cause he's hilarious. James Gregory. Thank you very much, uh, Brandon. Greg was in it. <laughs> James Gregory. Thanks. You got to go and watch, just look up YouTube, James Gregory and the lottery. He's, he's hilarious. But, or I want to say, he says, burn the house down, buy a new house. And uh, he's like the Bronco, throw the Bronco and burn it. You say, well, well, shouldn't you shouldn't you just pay that off? Pay it off. Shoot, buy a whole new Bronco. He was just it's pretty funny. But that's the way a lot of people think. Sometimes I'm either gonna or gonna. And you, you gotta you gotta in your mind think different. Wealthy people focus on their net worth, poor people focus on their working income. So I don't want to necessarily see what I have today. I want to see where I'm having to what I can have tomorrow. I have Big dream things and small dream things, and I'm working both those plans. So the big dream things don't work out. The small dream things are there for me. What I don't do is work focus on just what income I can have today. If I need money tomorrow, I can go work a job somewhere. I'm sure tomorrow around here in Georgia, you can pick up a job in a heartbeat anywhere and work and go make some money at any time. But that doesn't build a future. That just pays you this week. You got to try to figure out the things that build your future and spend some time on looking at those things in the future while you work that job. Wealthy people manage their money. Pe poor people mismanage their money well. And what I mean by that is, so let me just give you some. And I don't mean anything by this. So if you smoke, please don't take offense. I never have understood why somebody would go and buy cigarettes at a gas station when you can go buy a whole box of cigarettes at a, where do you buy cigarettes at? Uh, what? Oh, sorry. It's called a carton. Sam's Club. Uh, and, and what? Sam's Club. Oh, Sam's Club. So you can go buy a whole carton at Sam's Club for way less money than you go buy one pack. But for some reason, we just go buy one pack all the time at, at the at, at the gas station. Um, coffee at Starbucks is beyond me. I cannot understand it for the life of me. You can go get a 50 cent coffee at McDonald's. Maybe not anymore. I don't know. But get you a, a 50 cent coffee or you can get you can get. Huh? Citizen discount. Senior discount. My wife's making fun of me now. You can go get a, a coffee uh, at, at, at the store and buy this great big old tub of coffee that makes I don't know how many cups. So let's say 100. I don't even know. I don't drink coffee. Uh, we don't have a we don't have this anymore. But my mom and dad used to go in and dip in this uh, 
Folgers can, a red can, and then put it inside his coffee maker, and then they would start this uh, coffee maker, and pretty soon there was a horrible smell in the house, and then my mom and dad would have cups of coffee. I never have. I, I don't understand why you would go and spend six dollars or five ninety five on a on, on a coffee. And then even worse than that, some people made ice in it. I don't mean it's that one at all. But we we tend to not make bad decisions on the little things. I was uh, one of our boys that's uh, here. He's uh, our nephew. He's staying with us right now. I was trying to teach him something. And he was getting a drink, and I said, "All right." Um, his name is Derek. I said, Derek, I want to think about something. Every time we go get a drink, you come in and get a, uh, it's a, like an energy drink. I can't think of what it is, but it's a, a Gatorade, some kind of Gatorade, and it's two thirty nine. And I said, all of us get a dollar nineteen soda, and you get a two thirty nine soda. That's a dollar and ten cents. Well, let's just say it's a dollar, and we usually do that a couple times, maybe let's say twice a day, maybe once a day, and let's say that's seven times a week, or or maybe on average on the weekends we bring it up to ten. So ten times a week, I said that's four times a, a month. That's forty dollars a month. I'm paying for you to drink a different drink than everybody else in the car, and you're not worth forty dollars to me. That's what I told him. If you want to pay forty dollars, you pay your own forty dollars. I'm tired of paying your forty dollars. From now on, you get a dollar nineteen soda, just like everybody else. And he just looked at me, and I said, "Son, you need to learn right now that forty dollars is it could be the difference between you having a house and not having a house." That $40 could be, be between you having food on the table and not having food on the table. It's time you start making good decisions now. Manage your money well and watch what you're doing with your money to become uh, a, more, a more wealthy person. Wealthy people have their money work hard for them. Poor people work hard for their money. And, and that's what I started this with. You've got to change your mindset. You've got to change your thought process of how you look at money and how you look at things and look at them differently. You can't look at the losses. I am uh, 48 minutes into this, and I have 8 million more things to say. So, Jody, we may have to do a, a mindset of a millionaire, too. Wealthy people act in spite of fear. Poor people let fear stop them. If you're not careful, you'll be scared to do everything. Now, I'm going to tell you a funny story. I used to be scared of nothing. I went to try out for this church years ago in, down in uh, uh, Missouri, Went down the river. I was a young guy. They had a tree sticking out over the river. I swam down below, felt it was pretty deep, maybe like seven, eight feet deep. I got back out of the thing, walked up the tree, got all the way to the top of the tree until one of the people pulled up and said, hey, uh, Gary? I'm like, yeah. And I just preached at the church that morning. And they said, uh, you, you, you going to jump in that water? I said, sure I am. And I jumped in. And they thought, you're crazy climbing that tree and jumping in that water. And I checked it before I jumped in there. But I wasn't scared to do so. Now, let's go forward a little bit. And I go to the lake over here by my house, not too far away, about three miles away. We go, and there's a little dock right there, little wall. And you can't see real good in the water. It's not like Hawaii water I'm used to where you can see 40 foot deep. You couldn't see maybe six inches in the water. And I didn't know if that water was deep or not deep. So rather than jumping in, I was going to step down in there. And about that time... Here comes my son. He is eight, I think now. His name's Blake. Running like a madman and dives and jumps in the water and lands on his belly on the sand with his bottom and the back of his head sticking out of the water at a dead stop. And I'm thinking to myself, whew, thank goodness I'm not that crazy man I used to be. And I let a little bit of fear stop me from doing something stupid. Otherwise, people think there's a beach well right there in the lake. Now, listen. It is, it is things that you do in your life that you choose. I am going to have to get over some fear and some things that I do. If you want to flip houses, if you want to do real estate, if you want to drive a truck, if you want to, whatever you put after that, you must overcome the fact of not letting fear stop you. Make a choice that I am going to do something with my life that's going to make it better and that's going to make a difference in who I am and what I am and where I'm headed. <laughs> Carl is uh, uh, one of Blake's uh, adopted uncles on here, used to live here with us. Yay, Blake, he said, but uh, it, it was a little bit rough. All right, I would take, uh, we're gonna, I'm going to stop there, and we'll do some more. I thought maybe I'd take some of your questions. If you have some questions, I would try to answer them. And uh, if you want to type in some questions that you would have, hey, this is where I'm at, maybe I can give you a little bit of advice and try to answer some of your questions. I'd be more than happy to do so. If you wanted to ever ask somebody um, a million or something, I thought I would give you opportunity to do. I, as I said before, I don't have anything to sell. 
Uh, we have a team that we do real estate all across the country, and you can talk to Jody about that if you're interested in that. Jody at thefinestplace.com. The emails probably came from her or me. You can email back Jody at J O D I at thefinestplace.com and ask her about that stuff. We'd love to have you be a part of our team. If you want to do real estate and don't have any money, I have the money and don't have a big enough team. So I need more people. All right. Anybody got some questions? If you got a question, you can type in the question there uh, rather than just um, um, raise a hand. Oh, thank you, Jody. Jody put the uh, her email up there so you guys can uh, talk with her if you need to. All right. Anyone got a question? One thing you ought to do if you're somewhere and you got a chance, you ought to definitely ask, ask a question. Anyone can. Thanks for the motivation and look forward into the next year. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Anybody? Uh, sometimes you don't even know what to ask. Like, I'm, I'm afraid there's going to be a dumb question. No, don't. I don't think so. The day I spent with you going to Fort Leonard Wood, I learned more just listening and than four years in school. Thank you, Norman. I appreciate that. And I had a great fun time that day. We went to see, I flew all the way to uh, Missouri. This is when I lived in Hawaii. I flew all the way to Missouri to see my son graduate at uh, Fort Leonard Wood, top of his class. It was absolutely awesome. And Norm went with me and sat with, uh, matter of fact, what's funny is we walked in there and one of my good friends was supposed to be his leader. Uh, and I was sitting with his wife and, and their little boy and then myself and Norm. And we got in there and the guy started yelling out what to do. And I thought, boy, that guy is strong, whoever he is. And it happened to be my friend. But when he was a military guy, he was like, one, two, three, four. But when he's my friend, he's like, hey, Gary, how are you? How's it going? Dan? I thought, wow, what happened to that dude? Yeah, but the only way I knew it was him was when he walked by, his boy that was sitting beside me with his mom said, daddy. So it was pretty, pretty funny. Um. I like that. Don't uh, uh, one of the guys says, don't be afraid to spend time with people who are wealthy and ask questions. I think that's a good thing to do. And I'm giving you that opportunity uh, if anybody wants to do so. I totally understand, though, why you're sometimes a little little scared to to type something in. You know, I don't want to say something that's really a dumb question. There's no such thing as a as a dumb question. Um on the one thing they're willing to promote their value is a weakness for me. How do you do this humbly? Okay, so there's a difference between your value and thinking you're something. Um, most of you know me. I don't dress to success. I, you know, if those of you that have been around me, you you know. Why was that funny, my Sorry. my baby? <laughs> my wife was uh, laughing right now. I, I just don't. I, I've never cared about that. My success is it's it's not exactly how I look or who I am. I, I get on an airplane and I'll be wearing a, a Terry our, it was our nanny now runs our house and has uh, businesses that we run. She takes care of them. Um, she buys me a uh, Dallas Cowboys shirt and I wear it only on airplanes in first class. You'd be shocked at how many people talk to me in first class um, and um, talk to me because of that shirt. But I wear that shirt. I don't dress for the, the super successful people or people to look up to me because I've never cared about who I am or who you are. I only care about what we can be together and how we can help each other in life. And I think that's a good way to be. But if I know my value and you ask me a question, I'm going to share my value. Or if I know my value, let's pick if I go out with a realtor to look at a property and I've been buying houses for years and she's been a realtor for three years. There's no way she can tell me everything she that I need to know about being, uh, you know, buying a house. At the same time, she might have something new that I don't know that that I want to learn. I have a good friend named Benji Travis. You guys can look him up, Benjamin TV. Uh, his wife is uh, it's Judy's time. Benji and I have traveled all over the United States together, hung out for probably three years all over the country when I was traveling, speaking on stage for real estate, and. Uh, and to this day, he's still calling me and say, you need to do this. OK, now try this and do that. And I try to do so. And I think it's a, enjoyable that he wants to make me better and I want to make him better. And uh, uh, I was very impressed. He sent me a verse the other day. It was talking about um, to, to shield your eyes from any other women and don't look at them. We was talking about going to the movies and I don't look at R rated movies with naked women on the screen. I look down and my wife would always tell me, OK, now you can look. And I, I didn't want to look. She's the only one I wanted to see. And he thought that was funny. But then he found a verse this week in the Bible. Maybe it was Monday. No, he was on, he was on vacation. So it was last Wednesday, uh, uh, Thursday. And he said, uh, I found this verse. and It was really cool. He sent that verse and I wrote him back. I said, that's, that's a great verse. It's, it's what I based that on. And, uh, and it's true. So don't be afraid. If you have some talents, Cheryl, don't be afraid to push those talents forward and, and, and be powerful at it. Go after it. Um, it's, there's a difference. Hum, humbleness is 
um, you don't have to be the guy in the room. If you guys remember at one of our classes we had a couple years ago, everybody spoke but me. You remember that? Why? I don't got to be the big guy in the room. It doesn't matter. It matters who you train and who you teach and what you do and how you give uh, to somebody else that makes a difference. So, all right. Uh, let's see. What is your trailer days going to be next year? There is a schedule that went out. Uh, email Jody. She's got those. I saw the date, so I know there is one. But if you'll you'll send that out, you can do that. I have at least half of the list wrong, but will be on the. Will this be on the website? So, uh, Jody, that's a question for you. He says he wants yeah, to. Yeah, Carl, we'll, we'll put the recording on the website. Okay. So you'll be able to go back, Carl, and watch it again and again and, and, and go through and try to try to change that. Um, you're welcome, Cheryl. Thank you very much. And don't be afraid to show who you are. And by the way, I've spent a lot of time with you. You're at my, my, my house, so I know you have a lot of talent. Use those talents uh, to, to go further. And, and don't let don't let people push you around. But at the same time, don't be the person that pushes around. Now, I come like I said, I come across a little abrupt sometimes and I know that. But my heart is good and I want people to succeed. I want all of you to succeed. everybody that's on this webinar. I would love for you to succeed and do way better than I've ever done. And if I can just give you a little step up and you surpass me, I want to cheer for you all the way. Nothing greater than being a coach that sends somebody to the minor major le minor leagues and then to the major leagues. And I think it's absolutely awesome to be able to be that way and to care about other people. All right. Last chance. I'm going to give you a last chance. And then we, I have a whole uh, like three more pages of stuff I want to go over. That is the uh, way you think about things, the way you look at certain deals that you do, how you go through them quickly, all kinds of different stuff, a mindset of of not just in real estate, by the way, but in many, many deals. And I wanted to do that. So. Um, hopefully uh, you guys can get a chance to see that. All right. Any other questions? I'll give you just a second. More. Oh, here we go. What, what was it that made you uh, decide to do what you do? Was there a specific moment? No, I, I don't think there was. I, I think it was a growth time. I wanted to do one thing and I fought to do it and I'd done it well. And I moved up to the next thing and I fought to do it and do it well. And not that I'm like the end all be all, by the way, I, I don't think that at all. I fail and have good things and have bad things just like everybody else. But I did have, I think, a time where I where I decided I'm going to change me. I am going to do something. I'm going to change who I am. My wife and I had a bunch of real estate. We had bought several million dollars in real estate and we could not go any further. The banks wouldn't give us no more money. They wouldn't allow us to do more things. We had to come up with a different plan. We humbled ourselves and went and listened to a bunch of people that probably hadn't done as many houses as we had. Uh, we had these rental income coming in and we we're making a good living. And both of us in the real estate world went to see somebody else in the real estate world. And uh, it went there. But that's 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 what we did. Um, and, and from seeing that, we made a decision. We're going to do this. My wife and I decided we're going to give up three or four years of our life and go after this wholeheartedly. and. Uh, and we, we love real estate together. And that, that's a huge thing, too. If you have a good mate that's behind you, that's a gigantic thing. Thank you, Norm. I, I appreciate it. So thank you, Cheryl. I appreciate that also. All right, everybody, we're going to get off here. And hopefully we give you uh, some information that you can use if you want to get uh, where you can see this. Jody can probably make it available to you, uh, either one of us. Um, on our YouTube channel, we've got a lot of videos and a lot of webinars on the YouTube channel. Uh, it's Gary. Uh, I think it's the deal funders. Um, so you go to YouTube forward slash the deal funders and we'll come up all kinds of things on there to watch different things to see and uh, go there and enjoy those. Thank everybody for being here. Uh, we have a couple more webinars coming up. We have a team webinar for everybody that's on the team uh, on next Tuesday, I think. But everybody else, uh, we'd love to have you come be uh, a part of us. And uh, if you want to find out more about that, you can talk to Jody, Jody at the .com. And I hope you guys have a blessed life. And I hope this was some things just a little bit eye opening to try to change who you are and where you are. Have a great evening and God bless you. Get out and vote, everybody. Go vote. Just a few weeks away. All right. Bye bye. Sorry, I had one more question. Let me get there real quick. Thank you very much. Thank you, Carl. Thank you, Cheryl. All right, everybody. Bye-bye.